Hello and welcome to Film Music House. I'm here with Ilan Ishkeri and Raphael Thibault. Um, they are both composers and they will be discussing the scores of their docu-series, um, Ilan with A Perfect Planet and Raphael with Secrets of the Whales. Um, I'm Louise Boyle. Uh, I'm the Senior Climate Correspondent for The Independent. Um, okay, so to begin, I think if you can both just tell me a little bit about the series um, and how you came to be involved. Go ahead, Elon. Uh, uh, okay, great. I'll go first. <laughs> so, um, A Perfect Planet was, uh, I was approached um, and I was a, a little reticent uh, because this, this, has been my fourth collaboration with Sir David Attenborough. And, um, and I just felt like if, if I was going to do another one, I, I, I wanted to make sure that there was, um, th that there was a really good reason to do it, that I was really genuinely inspired and motivated to do it. Um, and what really, uh, captured, uh, my my imagination and, and 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 my passion on on this show was that it was so focused on climate and um and and that there was an episode within it that was on human beings and david had never done that before and so uh i i felt almost a, a social responsibility to to sort of take this on and, and in whatever small way my music contribution uh would would help the 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 you know the cause for for looking after the planet i i wanted to to grab that opportunity so so i'm rafael and uh i've been a film composer for uh six years now and secrets of the whales is actually my first um um large-scale tv series uh, so very excited about that. I've been approached by the, the team at Red Rock, Red Rock Films a couple of years ago. Me and my agents have been approached by them, and um, I was supposed to I was supposed to write maybe one episode because they were thinking about having multiple composers, like one composer per episode. And I ended up scoring the whole show because they were happy with what I did in the first episode. So I was very thrilled about that, and. Um, and to me, it was a very special project because I've always been, like a lot of people, very much fascinated by the whales, not just the animals, but uh, just the musical aspect of these animals, because music is definitely a major part of the way they, you know, communicate, like the, their language. And um, I've been always fascinated by this underwater world as well, because this is a place that I will never be able to go because I had serious issues with my earring when I was a kid and um and if there's one thing I can't do it's just go into water like even like one inch in the water so it, it, I was always kind of fascinated by this underwater world also for that reason and it's always been very mysterious for me and so that was that was a very special very special project for me. Uh, Raphael, I'm, I'm skipping ahead here, but the, just from what you said there about the whales, um, it, it, it seems the case, but I had read that Brian Scary, who's the photographer um, on the series, had said that scientists have been studying humpback whales for about 50 years and they still don't really understand why they sing. Um, yeah. So obviously that does seem like something that you've sort of built into to creating the, the score. Yeah, actually, you know, at first, I mean, I knew that, you know, music and singing was a big part of the whales world and you know in general um i didn't know about the the humpback specifically and um and the way they you know think the impacts and all the whales actually use even use the coral and the you know the water the ocean to broadcast their music and their singing to communicate with each other and that their songs can be heard by other whales or species on the other side of the the ocean, and I, I did I had no idea about that, and I, I think that uh, yeah, it reflects the fact that there's still a lot of mystery around those animals, and a lot a lot needs to be you know discovered. And um, I was I was I was even more inspired by it than I thought I would ever be when I started the project. And and of course, as a composer and as as a French person as well, I was 
it was hard for me not to think back, you know, about this this film in the 80s, The Big Blue, this French movie, um, and this incredible score by Eric Serra, who recreated those whale sounds, you know, out of synthesizers. They're not real whale sounds. And it was hard for me not to be tempted, you know, uh, by just doing, you know, the same thing, not exactly the same thing, but doing something around the singing uh, and and this music that these animals create. So that was a big part of my, um, you know, the, the the my approach when I first started working on that project. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I suppose that's sort of yeah, I, 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 love that. <laughs> I love that was a reference for you because I I remember that. that that movie had a really big impact oh, on me. Really? Um, you know, in my younger years, and I had one of the first soundtracks I ever owned, and and me too. Uh, <laughs> still, I really love that 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 yeah. score and and that film. It's a real real masterpiece. Did you know that he actually recreated everything out of synth, and that there's no, nothing? That that I did not know. So I'm so delighted to have to have that bit of information. That's, yeah. that's really amazing. Um, I suppose a, a question kind of unavoidable and from the past year that we've had, um, how has the pandemic sort of affected how you created the, your scores in a sort of a practical way? Has there been additional challenges for you both? It was, yeah, definitely for me. I, I think, you know, in, uh, one aspect of it is that you're, you're creating music and, and that tends to be a pretty lonely job. You sit in a room and try to come up with something and then try and make it fit the image. Um, so, so that aspect wasn't different, although it was a, a little bit cha more challenging for me because I was uh, homeschooling my at that time my, my four-year-old daughter. So, so, so that made my my time quite limited, um, or, or at least I, I didn't get long stretches. Uh, I, I just you know get sort of ten or fifteen minutes here before I had to go back. So, so that was uh, that was challenging. Um, but but really the biggest problem was was recording and uh, Raphael I don't know if you had to record during that time but I, I recorded the first two episodes just before the pandemic and um, and or just before lockdown came in in the UK and then after that the the schedule just went out the window because everything ground to a halt the editorial everything uh, ground to a halt and then we needed to work out how we were going to record the score and Fortunately for me, we'd, uh, I'd always wanted to take a, a more contemporary approach, which meant that the score didn't rely on, on having a symphony orchestra all in a room together. Um, but there were a lot of uh, orchestral instruments in the score. Um, I, at, at one point, Iceland was still open for recording and we were able to record uh, groups of 30 strings um, so we, I, I was able to do that with, uh, and that was quite, I'd recorded there before because a friend of mine, Atli Orbison, also a great composer, he lives out there and, uh, and had uh, got me to record out there before and, and he conducted it for me. So that, so that, that was fortunately quite easy, but then all the brass and the woodwind instruments we recorded with musicians in London, but but we had like, you know, the the leader of the London Symphony Orchestra, French horns, was playing the part in his living room. And um and and you know, we have the technology now where where you can you can have a digital acoustic model of of whatever space you want, Abbey Road Studios or a church or whatever, and you could take that recording and you could place it in there. And in fact, you could place it in a particular location in that room and it's it's very convincing but it is incredibly labor intensive and and the and it's not it's not cohesive rhythmically even though they're playing with a click they're not playing with each other and and same with the tuning it is in tune but they're not in tune with each other and so these real subtleties all had to be worked on with technology and so i i, I don't think that you'll you particularly notice it when you hear it, especially because the, the, a lot of the contemporary elements cover it over. But piecing that all back together was was uh, a hu hugely difficult and and very it took an incredible amount of time. Um, but uh, but you know, thank God I have a really amazing 
team um, who were able to help make that happen. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it was, I think it was very different because um, it, it was not really question at the beginning, you know, that, you know, that we're, we're going to have life flares. So it, it could have been, I think, but the problem is after COVID happened because we started, I started scoring in March last year. So it was literally, I started working when the pandemic really started to hit the US really bad. Um, and I, it, it, so, so I think that it, it, in our minds, it was not even an option um, at, uh, you know, at that point. So everything has been done in the box, as we said, uh, as we say for Secrets of the Whales, there's no, not a single live instrument in the score. Um, so I had to, so it, I would say that it was both a blessing and a, and, a, and, a, and a real challenge because the challenge was that I had to work around my music so much you know all the time because i knew it would not be recorded so it had to to sound authentic and perfect you know right at the big like right you know uh right there and so for me it's been challenging because i had to sometimes change the melodies change the instrumentations just because it just it it, it didn't sound you know real enough to me so that i i spent a lot of time doing that and but it was also a blessing i guess because it gave me so much freedom you know um to play around with you know all the other elements that i've added to the score um the score is hybrid like it sounds mostly orchestral but it i actually used a lot of, of electronic elements to enrich it and kind of make up you know, for the fact that there would not be any life player at all. So, um, so it was great to be able to play around with all these, you know, contemporary electronic sounds along with orchestral arrangements, you know, I think it led us to this versatile hybrid score that we were, we were very, you know, happy about uh, at the end. But, um, and then, I mean, so of course it's always better to work with you know human beings and I miss that you know dimension a lot and I didn't get to meet anyone. I mean I'm I'm pretty sure that it was the same for you Elan like we didn't get to meet the production team we don't we don't get to meet the filmmakers like I mean I I didn't um, on my end and it, it was it was tough because it was a big project and a lot of people were you know involved and. Um, and but, but I think we will meet one day, but it just feels weird, you know, that we've been working with these people for more than a year now and and still haven't met them in person. Um, and but but the good news is that we are going to have um, a, um, a live show uh, for Secrets of the Whale next year. So there's going to be a live orchestra. So I, you know, playing to the pictures, you know, mm. with like 60, 70 players it's going to be a tour so it's going to be super exciting and i think we're going to make up for you know what we missed at that time around uh but yeah i i think one of the challenges because of course i had the the same thing i i'd fortunately met all the uh directors of the episodes and the production team before lockdown happened which i think is okay. really helpful because um you, you know technology allows for, for uh, so much communication. But I think, especially with music, it can be difficult. I, I, I think it's really important to be in the room with people because, you know, music is is the, the thing that you need where, where words won't do. You know, it's the it, it, music express, especially in, in, in film and television, it, it expresses something that, that, that words and language can't. And, and so, uh, and so I I get so much from sitting in a room with a with a director and a producer and before they've even said a word. I mean, I mean, I mean Raphael, I don't know if you you've ever had this experience, but I've written written a piece of music for a film and and thought it was absolutely perfect, and I've started playing it in the room with the with the director and the producer, and one minute in, I'm like, I know this is completely wrong, and and and. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need words to know that, and so not having that kind of communication is I is uh, makes the job longer and harder as well. 
Mm, yeah, I agree. And getting, you know, immediate reactions on people's faces, like it's just a reflect of their immediate emotions, right? And you cannot get that in an email, nor in a Skype or Zoom or whatever. So I, I totally agree. And this relationship that you develop with the filmmakers in the same room while you know you're working not like not not just for the the screenings but sometimes you just you know improvise some stuff together and you see if it works out and this is such a a wonderful and paramount dimension of our work and it, and it's 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 hard as you said Ilan like it's a very very lonely job already so if we miss this like and if we don't have that it it makes it even more you know closed and and so so yeah it's definitely harder the both series um i think when you've you know i've watched watched them both um they really are sort of so compelling because they capture the personalities um of you know of the of the animals of the species and and you get the sort of sense that you know they're sort of in some ways just like us um and i just wonder if you when you're creating the music if you watch the footage or you know you watch it ahead of time do you sort of see these animals as as characters in the score the way you might um if you were scoring you know something for film and television that had actors actors in it go ahead um, uh, uh, yeah sure okay yeah i i certainly do i think i think that that um that for me the scenes were so different um and uh, and so I'd look at a scene and I and I'd be able to say, okay, well, you know, this 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 scene with these ants, they you know they've got a really limited amount of time to go and get a bit of food before they get burnt to death by the sun. They've got to drag it back into their thing. And I'm like, that's like a heist movie, right? It's like a short film version of a heist movie. And and so I'd look at each scene and 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 see what what the what the narrative of of it was. Every story has a beginning and a middle of middle and an end. And um, and then and then yeah, you, that you'd sort of anthropomorphize these creatures, um, but but I think the the balance is especially with documentary, you, you know, with, with fiction, you can you can really push the emotional boundaries, and and, and but but if you do that with uh, with documentary, you run the risk of making the audience feel like they've been emotionally manipulated and if and if they feel that then then the, then the authority of the documentary uh, begins to to crumble so so there's a there's a fine line you don't want to push it too far so so I'm just always watching for that the, the balance of of those two those two things that's such a good point um yeah, I, I guess that for the whales, like the whole point of the show of Secrets of the Whale, the thing is about, it's just to emphasize the fact that the whales are like us at so many levels that we don't know. Um, and that, you know, they, they, they have societies that are very similar to ours and they have emotional lives that are very, you know, similar to ours. And it they, these are very sophisticated cultures and it's like a mirror, you know, of ourselves. And they isolate less themselves by language, identity matters to them. Um, uh, they have parenting techniques, they have feeding strategies, you know, techniques that change depending on where they are. Um, so all this really, I was not expecting uh, because it, it, I related so much more than I thought I would. And, and obviously I think my music uh, illustrated that. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, I guess it was, it was like little stories, you know, and all these family, you know, small family stories that we get throughout the show. For example, this grandmother teaching, you know, the grandchildren how to hunt or, or this mourning mother who, you know, that's carrying her dead baby for days because she can't let go because she's too sad. Or um, this, this uh, orca, uh, that feeding Brian scary at some point that's like she's trying to she's handing like she's basically offering him a fish because we don't really know why but probably because she thinks that uh, might be hungry it's too tiny or whatever but it it really helped me to see them you know as 
characters like I would see characters in the movie and uh, I was not expecting that at all from from a documentary about whales and I, I found it really fascinating. Does that change then I mean but you, you kind of touched on this before but you know with nature docuseries there's often this is sort of soaring epic orchestral sound that sort of overlays the whole thing and and you when you see scenes like for example with the whales you know the mother mourning with the you know the her calf um, how do you sort of create that intimacy you know that really draws the the viewer in well i'm 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 trying to i've i've tried to be consistent you know so I wanted, I worked, you know, in one episode at a time, but I really tried to be consistent in the way that I was approaching these big epic moments as a position to those very uh, intimate moments that you're very close to a family moment that is very, yeah, intimate. And I think that's um, almost instinctively, it was not even a creative choice. I, I just went for uh, solo strings, you know, uh, for all of these little, small family intimate moments but it, it's it's I think it's still epic in a way but I had to be very mindful because I didn't want to overstep you know what, what was going on and be too obvious you know about the 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 emotions that we had there exactly as you know Ilan mentioned earlier and um it was tricky sometimes because you know you want to illustrate a moment that is both surprising disarming sad um, but majestic. Uh, so you have ev all of that has to be in the queue, but you know, because it's intimate, it has to be small. So that, that was, that was very interesting slash challenging. Uh, yeah. You know, I do think you, you do have to work quite hard though, because the, the there isn't, the characters don't have a dialogue. So there isn't anything on the screen to, to help you. It's like scoring a silent movie. I mean, obviously there's sound effects, but, but there isn't any, there isn't any uh, language to, to uh, help um, give information. And we don't have the subtleties of understanding the, the, the expressions in the animals like we would other human beings. So, so, um, so you do have to do quite a lot of work. So, which is great because it's a, it's a great musical opportunity as a composer, but it, it also means that you've, you know, you've got to work. You've got to be really good at what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, the narration, I think, fine. Like I found it helpful when there's narration, you know, but even that, even then you have to be careful because, you know, there's so much going on at the end, even, even in those, I find actually, and in, in my experience, like even in those intimate moments where you have narration and you have the sound effects and you have these nature sounds that are to me already music you know so it's it's always kind of you know there, there there are many things at the same time you have to walk around with and 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 it's true that there's something you have to like something that's lacking you have to make it for with the music and exactly you, you have to you have to hit the right spot for sure yeah that was actually my my next question was about you know you've got unmistakable voices with these series, Elan, you've got Sir David Attenborough and Raphael, you've got Sigourney Weaver. So how much do you consider, you know, their voices when you're creating the music? Oh, a lot for me. I mean, you, <laughs> I, mean I, I think it's, it, you know, it, it, for me, it's like David Attenborough is the lead singer of the band, right? <laughs> Yeah, and same here. Actually, it's but it's 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 funny because um, I I mostly worked to a scratch audio that was a male voice, uh, and you know the whale societies are very much dominated by female. Like female whales play a paramount role in those societies, and the fact that when I knew that Sigourney Weaver was coming on board, and then when I heard her voice, I think like maybe. 30% of the, the 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 show I scored to her voice it it felt just it felt so right um there is like there's this warmth you know in her voice this depth that that is almost like motherly and reassuring that I found was so on spot for 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 the show and I was thrilled that she was part of it the both series um have a very serious underlying message uh, to them. Uh, you know, the impact of the climate crisis, 
loss of biodiversity, um, really the sort of heavy human footprint that we're leaving on the natural world. And I wonder, do you think that music has a role when it comes to inspiring people, um, either environmentalism or you know, sort of greater awareness um, of, the, of climate change? Um, yes, I mean, I, I think I think music has uh, throughout the ages has played a role and, and especially in, you know, throughout the last century played a really important role in social uh, and political movements. Uh, and so I don't see why it can't um, play a role here as well. Um, you know, what I, I really was inspired by uh, in one of the in the humans episode, uh, they had a ch school age. They had school age activists uh, talking, and uh, and as I said, I was at home with my daughter the whole time, and so I I just became very aware of 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 this you know the the, the way that I was teaching my daughter to recycle and 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 that you know we're we're leaving this planet for the next generation and you know the, these thoughts really played on my mind and and i'd written this theme that ran through the show and uh and my daughter kept singing it back to me which is quite unusual she's normally not interested in anything i'm doing at all um but um but uh, and so I thought, oh, this is quite a simple the theme and maybe children could sing it. And when the lockdown lifted uh, over here in the UK, the timing was kind of perfect. And so I got several children's choirs to come and sing on the show. And those kids from those schools were, uh, were very inspired and very excited to, to be a part of it. And, um, and, and so maybe in some way it helped to, to, to educate them a little bit more. And, and, uh, you know, Raphael was talking about that you, you, you're going to be doing shows and, and I would love to be able to do something like that with children's choirs. Um, yeah, you know, something we've talked about, but, uh, but, uh, we'll see if it happens, but, but I, I would love to inspire children and to help educate, uh, through music. Yeah, I think I think I think same here. The um, the um, like again, music is such a an important major part of of those whale societies. You know, um, the the fact that the fact that music is is such a paramount part of of the way they interact and communicate with each other. Is it's really you know it grounded me so much because I realized that you know, we, we, we tend to feel and think that ma music is a man, male, man, male thing and that we created it. And I think that it's actually, it was there way before us and that um, nature is also, you know, kind of making its own music and boyles are such a prime example of that. And the fact that music is such a important part of, of our, you know, societies like human beings it's another layer for me, uh, you know, in this show of that, that 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 just demonstrates how similar we are. And what I really love about this show is that it's not going to focus on how we have to blame ourselves for all the things we're doing wrong. There are tons of things we're doing wrong, definitely. Um, but I also like that this is a new kind of it's a new way of trying to reach people's mind and hearts, you know, just by showing them how similar we are you know to those animals and that we are or we are all sharing the same rock and we we are all the same and and i think that this is a very smart way to reach you know the audience and make them feel that they have to protect them because by protecting them them they protect themselves they protect our own civilization civilization as well so yeah Elan, you touched on this a, a little bit when you you mentioned you know recycling with your your daughter, but you you both have really eclectic bodies of work. But do you feel sort of that this is working on these uh, series have sort of changed you personally? Um, 
I, I don't know. Has it changed? That's a big question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Save that for the end. <laughs> well, you know, it, I, I think it's been such an extraordinary time and uh, that, that you know, I, I think everyone has, you know, across the globe, where humanity has been affected. It's quite hard to separate that experience from 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 my musical creative life because my musical creative creativity is related to 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 that experience experience and then to have been working on something that that in so many ways is is connected to to the pandemic and to to you know what's happening uh, in the world in general um you know, has, I certainly learned stuff, le learned more about the climate. I, you know, I thought I was quite, I, I thought I was quite conscientious and quite educated. I thought I knew quite a lot about, about climate. Um, I feel a bit silly saying that to you, but, um, but I did. And, and I'd read about it and I cared about it a lot, but, but after working on the, on the series, I, you know, I realized that actually I, I, I know very little and, and I need to know more and I need to educate myself more. Um, but, um, but how much the, the show changed me versus how, how have I been changed or affected over, over the last year? That, that, that's hard to judge. Yeah, it, it, it's so true. It's hard to, it, it's hard to judge given that it happened at the same time. And, you know, it's, it's, there was also this thing that happened uh, that felt that I was ha I had this kind of big disconnection, you know, from the rest of the world because we we all had to isolate and 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 at the same time with that, you know, at the exact same time, I was I was connecting with another layer of our planet, you know, through those animals, and I've learned so much about it, and I felt really humbled by that, um, and. I am glad that it actually happened at the same time because I think that it made me even more receptive and, you know, uh, aware uh, of the key things that we should all learn watching this show. And um, I probably think, I think it would probably didn't have to, had the same impact if it was not during a pandemic. And um, yeah, for sure. And then as a, as a final question to you both, then, you know, what do you hope the audiences take away um, from, from these series? Uh, I, I hope that people take away more education about the planet, the idea that, that each individual has to take more responsibility um, in whatever way that is. And, and, and that also we all have a responsibility to educate the next generation uh, about the, the, the condition of the planet and what we're, you know, we, we, we need to prepare them for what they're going to inherit because it is, it's going to be a different place to, to, to the world that we grew up in. Uh, you know, people will, will, will uh, argue about how different it will be um, you, you know, you get some very extreme point of views and some point of views that say it won't be all that different at all. But, but I think everybody now agrees that it will be different. So I, I feel that responsibility very strongly. And, uh, and I hope that people who watch A Perfect Planet will, will see that and, and, and take that on board. Yeah, I feel exactly the same. Um... I feel like I mean I am I'm optimistic in a way that I feel like there are much more way we can leverage that than I thought we had you know in our hands and it and it it also you know includes entertainment and um, I've really realized through this series that this is this is incredibly powerful if we're doing it the right way um, and I think it's it's a wonderful way to to, to educate the next generation. My son is a little is a little young, but um, I hope that very soon I will be able to show him, you know, um, um, this this show and others and many others. Um, and and I think it's it's I think we 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 are very lucky, and I feel very lucky to be able to, you know, uh, have those kind of signals and messages go through 
like through art, through our music and through something that people actually enjoy watching. Um, and I, I totally agree. I think education is, 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 is like maybe 90% of the job. And, and I, I am optimistic because I feel like there's more, there's more knowledge and, and, you know, sensitivity in, in the next generation. And I feel like they are more aware of, you know, we've ever been about all those things. And I hope they won't hate us for that later on. But um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty optimistic about it. And it includes the consequences of the pandemic and, you know, the like series like uh, series like The Perfect Planet and Secrets of the Whales. I think that's a that's a good optimistic note to to stop on. And um, thank you both uh, so much for your thoughts and for telling us all about the, the series. Thank, thank you so much for having us. <laughs> thank you.